Welcome everybody, Red Arrow 23 here. Time for another addition to the Boom Beach Playbook. Today we're going to be going down, going through the three o'clock um, defense wrap core rush. <laughs> this boom, this beach. All right, so we got the Jedi Knight. Um, he's going to show us how it's done in Angry Lions um, using the three o'clock defense wrap um, on the core rush. So he's clearing out some mines and then we're just going to get into launching our troops and flaring up. Kaboom! So here we go, using a little mid flare point together. Noise, noise. And there we go. Look at that damage. Great hit from the Jedi Knight. Um, let's have a look, break it down a little bit. So, as we said, first thing he did was clear out some mines. <clears throat> so, this is a great hit. I love this hit. So much fun. So he's clearing out those mines, used one artillery, um, and there's a level 20 mines everywhere. And we're wrapping on this flamethrower here. Um, so just keep that in mind when we head up there. We can do a flag landing because they're, they're usually these two power cells on the beach. Um, if they're not there, you might need to do a flare landing. Um, just be aware of the ranges of everything. So the mortars were really close to being in range um, of the landing. But just get those flags nice and high so we can anchor. Remembering that um, when we're doing our flag landing, we usually or we pretty much always will drop our hero at the same time, which is going to be brick. Um, if we do that, we just got to remember that we've got to throw shorter flares. If you do a flare landing, you can flare basically directly up to where the shock launchers are. Um, and then drop the hero in behind and it'll and the timing will work out good but today we're just going to be looking at the um, flag landing which is usually the way to go and then from that position we can flare up to um, a midway point which is usually just between these defenses um, these are sometimes rocket launchers but it doesn't matter either way uh, but as long as that uh, mid flare is sort of on the right and we've launched our troops as close to a 45 degree angle as we can see. The Zookas are going to split a few defenses. Looks like he lost a few to the machine gun. That's going to be fine. And then they're going to converge through those power cells. And then we're throwing our next smoke. And the main thing that we're looking at whenever we do one of these walks where we got um, shorter flares is we want the Zookas to keep moving the entire time but we don't we want brick to arrive stop and close you can see the zookas are closing that gap now as soon as they're um, getting close that's when that flare needs to be landing so there you go boom zookas kept moving the whole time and now brick's not going to get too far ahead so that next flare point um, is going to be at nine o'clock of the left shock launcher um, right up against that top wall um, and then that way the zookas are just going to split in between the two rock the in between the rocket launchers and the power cells as you can see there they're just walking nicely through the middle and then that second to last smoke is going to be um, nice just covering that flare spot we've remember we've already cleared these mines so they're not going to be an issue if you haven't cleared them you you definitely need to because if you watch the next flare is going to hit that machine gun again not letting those zookas um, stop moving and spread and then as soon as that flare is gone, we're going to be throwing that smoke. And you see that we're wrapping around this flamethrower. You did clip that boom mine. That's fine. Not a big issue. Um, and then you'll see that he's no he's biased the smoke slightly towards the core, which is important because that's going to be how they spread. So we've flared onto that top machine gun. The Zookas are going to crowd around this flamethrower. And you'll see that they spread more out to the left. Um, then to the right so there's none 
on the statue side of the flamethrower. They're all on the other side. Um, <clears throat> and remember, the shocks are going to be very, very important right now because we need to shock this flamethrower that we are standing right next to because otherwise it will roast us. But we also have all of our Zookas in one really tight spot. So if we slightly miss shock, we could shock all of our girls. Um, so you got to remember that. We're going to be throwing a critter for this shock blaster and this shock launcher in this particular um, showing of it. And we need to shock those two machine guns in one shock. And then this flame throw or these two, three flamethrowers and this machine gun in one shock. Might even be more than that. Let me check. So once the Zookas have settled around that flamethrower and sniper tower, that's when you can throw your flare onto the core. And you can see that your um, smoke's already nearly about to expire. So you need to throw your critters first. So they're going to be coming in and landing. And then the shocks are already going out. And you can see that he hit the perfect four in a line shock. So he's gone from that flamethrower, um, hitting that perfect junction in between the machine gun, sniper tower, and two flamethrowers. And that's giving him four in a line. So flamethrower, 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 flamethrower. So there we go. That's actually really important because the far machine gun was in range of our Zookas too. You need to shock those top machine guns so they don't take us out remembering that there's um you're quite close to being out of bounds there so you need to be really accurate uh, you can shock all three all six of these rocket launchers in one shock the two shock launchers on the closer side activated um, battle orders already uh, looks like boom cannon might be lining her up right now which is annoying um, and then we can throw our other shock which is the other six. Oh, it went for a zooka that's really good and look at the damage just going in so as long as you hit all of those shocks, you'll rip a lot of damage. So there, this um, this one has, what is that, 1.6, so one point, just over 1.8 million. That's not right. Just over 2.8 million. Um, so that, he must have done about 1.4. Looks like he did pretty much half. So if someone did the same again, they'd be able to do, um, they'd be able to take it down. Great hit. I love it. Let's have one more um, look at it now that we know what we're talking about a little bit more. <clears throat> so first artillery, clearing out those mines. And then we can flag land under one smoke before we flare up to our mid flare point. Remembering that we want Brick to get there and stop um, so that we can close the gap between her and the Zookas. But we want the Zookas to keep moving so next flare is already there. Boom. Same thing on the next spot. Just before the Zookas are there. Bam. Doesn't matter if we clip that boom mine. Does matter that we get that um, smoke bias towards the core side. Because the Zookas are going to spread over that way. And then you just need to be focusing on flaring the core. As soon as that flare is gone. You can hit or you can hit battle orders before now. <clears throat> as long as brick doesn't come out of the smoke until you're ready to use battle orders. And now you just need to be lining up those shocks. So I normally hit the harder one first. So... This four group, remembering that if you don't get that flamethrower, you're pretty much done. Um, these two machine guns up above. Sometimes this sniper tower is also a machine gun, and so is this one, or a flamethrower. So you just need to keep that in mind, that you may need to shock that too. Um, remembering that all you need to do to shock a defense is um, have that circle of shock touching the base of the defense. So there's... there's it's, it's always going to be close, but you can um, get that circle going through the edge of a base, of, of a base of a defense, and it's going to hit that shock, um, whereas your Zookas might be closer to the middle of it, of that defense, or on the other side of that defense. So that's why we can shock all of these defenses, but not shock all of our um, Zookas. So there we go. Once we throw out um, the critter for the other side, and all of our shocks... You can see that our Zookas are untouched and they can just lay into the core. Happy days. So great hit to have in your repertoire. It's really going to help out your team with Titan. This is quite a tough hit and it can cost your team if you choose to go with this um, tactic and it and people don't nail it. It can cost you because if, if you don't get a lot of damage, if you make a small mistake 
it can cost you all of your damage as opposed to other hits where you might be able to get away with a little bit uh, a little bit more still a sick hit i love it glad to add it to the playbook um and give us a comment down below if you do take out Titan any differently. Um, and then we've got some other tactics to try. Give us a thumbs up for the other video. Thumbs down if you didn't. And subscribe for more Wimooch. Yeah.